Hi, I'm Cindy Sheehan. I'm the founder and national co-chair of March on the Pentagon. This year we are sponsoring Rage Against the War Machine. Hey folks, my name's Lee Camp. This is Nick Brana with the Movement for a People's Party. Hey friends, this is Derek Bros with the Conscious Resistance Network and the Mind Unleashed. Hi, I'm Tabitha Wallace. This is Emma with March on the Pentagon. I want to see you in Washington, D.C. on October 11th for Rage Against the War Machine. Why am I going to go to D.C. to rage against the war machine? My answer is simple. Why isn't everybody going to Washington, D.C. to rage against the war machine? Most of the anti-war movement has been essentially destroyed or gone back to sleep since the early 2000s after George Bush came into power. Once Obama took power, the anti-war movement essentially disappeared. Americans have no idea what their government does in their names every single day around the world. This isn't just a Donald Trump thing. Yeah, it, it, it's increased under Donald Trump. It, it was going under Obama too. He dropped tens of thousands of bombs per year. It was like a bomb every 15 minutes. Now it's a bomb every 12 minutes. And in America, that's what we call freedom of choice. Imperialism is built on the sort of fascistic tendencies that we have in this country, indeed that were founded upon being genocide and slavery. War isn't just something that happens over there, it is very much a home game. War affects all of us. You might not think it does. I need to deal with things like minimum wage and health care and the climate. Yes, you do. But it's very important that we recognize how the military industrial complex and how imperialism and war are directly connected to these issues. We have to end these wars. What the fuck are we doing? The military is one of the biggest polluters in the world. The U.S. Pentagon is the largest polluter in the world. The U.S. military is one of the world's biggest polluters. It is a number one polluter in the world. The Pentagon is the biggest consumer of fossil fuels. The U.S. military is the biggest consumer of fossil fuels in the world. It's equal to 140 countries. It uses more fossil fuels than 140 countries. The U.S. military emits more CO2 than most countries. So much pollution, increasing the carbon footprint of the U.S. military, and this is just one aspect of war. If we want to tackle the climate and we want environmental justice, we have to focus on the war machine. How can we face cataclysmic climate change without addressing that. If that's not a climate issue, I don't know what is. Not only overseas, where wars happen, where we're dropping bombs, where we have bases, but even in our own country, water is poisoned around military bases. There are super fun sites all over the place. It's destructive. It's the opposite of human progression. War has a bigger impact than most people think. The military industrial complex is a vital part of all of the issues that we constantly and consistently fight and build for. If you care about healthcare, if you care about education, if you are tired of militarized police, the militarization of our police force. High levels of suicide, such high levels of PTSD, such high levels of trauma that is internally kept within soldiers that sadly can't be reversed. A, a monstrous steaming pile of shit. A hundred miles in from every border of the United States is a quote-unquote constitution-free zone. The war machine is the umbrella that covers all of those things. How can we possibly get universal health care without drastically confronting the military industrial complex, this bloated, out of control war budget. We spend so much money, way more than half of our discretionary spending on the military is the reason why you can't get $15 minimum wage. It's the reason why people are always saying we don't have the money for universal health care. It's time to link these struggles together, understand the violence that's externalized and perpetuated by our government. Democrats and Republicans consistently unite to approve obscene war budgets. We always have money to perpetuate terrorism in the Middle East, for instance, or to try and topple uh, democratically elected presidencies in South and Central America. A year ago, the Pentagon was audited for the first time. And what did they, they find in this grand audit of the Pentagon? Nothing. The auditors came out and said, yeah, they, they failed the audit. We can't find shit. We don't know what's going on in there. That's not an audit. That's just a nothing. Somehow, some reason, this is justified. I'm not okay with people being killed and starved and harmed across the world in my name. We're fucking endlessly at war for no good reason. Dropping bombs in our names every single day. It kills, it maims, it displaces people all over the world. Sponsoring mass starvation in Yemen, brutal occupation in Palestine, 
or relentless drone bombing campaigns that cause a reign of terror against civilian populations, causing an unquantifiable amount of death and destruction. Military bases all around the world, loss of human life, the waste of money. We might not be literally dropping bombs on a country, but we're sanctioning countries, and sanctions are an act of war. We're starving people. We are not allowing them to get the necessary medical care that they need. Because of that, people are dying. That's on Americans. Rich man's wars that have nothing to do with keeping the United States safe. $21 trillion has got unaccounted for in unaccounted spending at the Pentagon over the past uh, uh, 20 years, according to their own goddamn budgets. We have a war economy. We export weapons. We have military contractors who- They are fought on behest of special interests who send troops in harm's way for their pure profit and benefit. During Rage Against the War Machine, we're going to start at the White House, where we're going to rage against Donald Trump and the Republicans, but we're also going to stop and we're going to rage against the Democrats too, because war is a bipartisan issue. I am most outraged about the mainstream media because they are the ones that allow the wars to happen and trick humanity into believing that somehow it is justified when absolutely it is never justified. We are going to rage against the mainstream media. We're going to stop at the Washington Post because they're complicit. If journalism was journalism, if reporting was reporting, if, if people actually gave a damn to share accurate information instead of just being puppets for the military industrial complex, for the war hawks, if the media just did their job, we wouldn't have war. Hold up a map to your average citizen and say, please point to the countries we're bombing. They'll go, ah, know what you're talking about. As a journalist, I dedicate my life, I dedicate my work to politically educating people about what their government is doing, to understanding the effects of our disastrous foreign policy, to make people aware that the only way we can fight and win and have a just society is if we confront the U.S. empire, mobilize with our brothers, sisters around the world, and truly, truly defeat it. We should be angry. And our voices are more important than ever. And this is why we're seeing so many psychological operations. This is why we're seeing so much propaganda. This is why we're seeing so much money being invested in trying to trick the general public into believing that harming someone else on this planet is somehow worth it when it never is. It's time for each of us to come together, whether you care about the environment, you care about the future of the children, you care about the war, you care about financial waste, you care about corporations having too much power or government having too much power. All of us can agree that it's time to put an end to war. I think it's time for us to build a movement that can intersect the awakening around the environment and around the climate with the anti-war movement. My own son was killed. It's time that we all got outraged. Please join us. Hold the United States accountable for the havoc that it wreaks worldwide because that comes back to haunt us in more ways than one. You should be a part of the March on the Pentagon, October 11th and 12th. We have to stand up and do something. We have to make our voices heard. Please be a part of it. It stops with us being able to share information, communicate with each other. That really is the way to prevent war. Protesting is one of the things that we can do, and that's what we're doing on October 11th in Washington, D.C. with Rage Against the War Machine. And we should get out there, and this is one of the many steps. We have to care. What choice do we have? Fucking get angry, stay angry, be a part of this. So it's really important that we bolster and support in solidarity the anti-war efforts that are ongoing. And that's why it's vital that we support efforts like the March on the Pentagon. If we don't make our voice heard, we are just as complicit as those that do the fighting. We are going to convince the people who look at war like it's Wall Street, the death merchants, the people who make the stuff that kills, the drones, the bombs, the missiles. When we convince them that they can make things that save the world, that save lives, they have the money, they have the technology, and eventually we convince them that there's a lot more future in building and loving and creating than there will ever be in war and destruction. On October 11th, I want you to rage against the war machine with me because war is when the government tells you who the enemy is and revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. Please join us on October 11th in Washington, D.C. for Rage Against the War Machine.